talk about the events this weekend. There was an NEF. There was uh, um, but FC. Um, but I know Mo's on already. So uh, why don't we just jump right into it and bring on Mo Kanani? Why not? I mean, he's here. He's making time out of this night. So why the hell not? Mo Al Kanani. How you doing, man? Welcome to the table. Pretty good. How are you guys? Can't hear you. All right. Here we go. Let's get his. Uh, well, let me figure that out. On Joe. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Loud we, and clear. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you guys? Yeah, you know, Fantastic, all right. man. Fantastic. Looking handsome after this weekend. It doesn't even look like you're having a fight. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, that was the game plan, man. Just stay on the outside and just pick him up far, and I believe I did that. Yeah. I, it, so they did share one piece. It was a little scary at the end of round one. You almost look like he had your back. It was, it was what were you thinking? That was uh, that was an amateur mistake, you know. Uh, I got confused when uh, they gave us the ten second uh, before the end rounds, you know, when they do the collapse, and uh, I got confused that by the end of the round, and I kind of let go, and I was in a bad situation. I tried to stay calm, and uh, I'm like, I right, ten second anyways, and that was the, the longest ten seconds of my life. <clears throat> I did hear that. One of the what was snafu of the night was they had a cowbell instead of like a, the ring clapper or something. And a fight there was a lot of confusion that. that happened that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but you came out victorious. Um, you know, was this the first time you've gone the distance in your pro career? Yes, as a pro, yes. So how 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 was how was that experience? You know, to be in such like a dog fight. You learn some new stuff about yourself, being able to go that distance. Because usually you're like right in, right out, and you handle this quick. Absolutely, man. Yeah, Nate insisted on uh, me fighting the slow fight. Um, he brought up the O'Brien fight, and he said that the best I looked, and uh, he wanted to see that again. So a finish was not in mind, really, going into that fight. Just wanted to show more tools and show tactical striking. Well, yeah, I mean, he had 18 pro fights already to his name. He was easily the most experienced professional fighter that you would face and you step up and you handled it like a pro and when adversity came your way you were able to stay composed survive and strategically stay ahead on the scorecard throughout the round it was a pretty damn impressive performance I would say so myself yeah, man, it's all about growing it's all about growing every fight and like speaking on that you're keeping that trajectory fighting your easily now most accredited and highly touted opponent to date and Peter Barrett and I remember talking to you when before you even made your pro debut and you were talking on this fast track trajectory. You wanted that big fight. You uh, to see you kind of play out the plan that you laid out for me. It's really impressive. I've got so much respect for you, so much respect for Pete, and I'm so antsy to call this fight, but this is exactly what you called before you even went pro. You want to take a bunch of fights, get on a roll, take some experience fights, and you want – Big names by the end of this year. How does it feel to be finally at that moment? Well, hopefully, man. Uh, you know, I've, I've never turned down a fight. I've been asking for big fights my whole career. But you know the game, man. Um, and finally, uh, that, that, that name came up, and I could not turn that down, man. That, that's a fight that excites me. Uh, I feel ready for it. I've been waiting for it for a long time. Peter Bear been around for a long, long time, and uh, – me as an amateur fighter coming up, I saw I saw all his fights. I saw him fighting multiple times when he was headlining a few cards that I attended and watched. Uh, it's pretty cool to uh, be able to be at that level to actually share the cage with him. I will I will say it's funny. You know, you mentioned you 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 kind of keep your eye on him, but you know, um, I think uh, Nate and I have mentioned this this as a fight before. I remember when you were like zero and zero, going pro one and zero. He's like, dude, I know Mo has the skills. He'd be taking on Barrett's and of the world and things. And he mentioned that to me, um, you know, and then finally I was like, hey, you know, you're not, I know you had to pump the brakes on Mo trying to jump into the deep end, you know, at 1-0 and 0-0. Oh and oh and oh, like, what do you think? It's time now. And he was like, let me talk to Mo because, you know, I, I know that this is the type of fight that's going to put him at that next level with a win. And here we are today. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for it. You said that yeah, me too, man. What excites you about the matchup specifically with Pete? Give me a couple of key points that you uh, well, kind of 
Well, Peter is a big name, man. Peter is a big name. That's 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 the first of it. And uh, second of all, Pete can fucking fight, man. And that's what I'm all about. I want to be in there. I don't feel. I want to feel threatened. And uh, that pushed me to train. But I've had the best camps in my life when I'm facing a game opponent. And uh, this is what I'm, this is what I'm uh, thinking about this fight. It's a fight that's gonna push me in my camp and the fight itself. Uh, stylistically, um, you know, Peter Barrett, highly tactical violence is not so tactical. It's just kind of a wild puncher. And I feel like um, my style is extremely precise and powerful. And I feel like I'm the worst stylistic matchup for him. Ah, I like it. I, I did notice that you threw a little dig like when we made the fight. You actually had your... your uh, <laughs> Your story, it was like highly calculated violence, and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. that's going on. I'm glad, I'm glad you picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to say, like, my first interaction with you, I think, goes back to Nori Abra when you fought for our title. And, um, you know, he missed weight. And I remember talking to you, and I called Nate afterwards. I'm like, Yo, this guy's a fucking great killer. Like, you just, like, dead-eye me. Like, I don't care. I'm fucking him up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, nice to meet you too, Mo. He's like, I don't care what he weighs. I'm fucking killing that kid. I, I'm paraphrasing. I'm probably, but you, that was what I felt like you said to me. You were just like, I'm fucking killing this kid. I Pretty much. That was probably the intention, no matter what I said. <laughs> and I called Nate and I was like, hey, you didn't tell me that I like, had a guy that will literally body bag somebody. Like, you know, you guys are pretty <laughs> intense out there. I will say, though, um, you know, Goodness. yeah, then you got you and Smythe. How, how's it feel having such a great squad around you? How do you guys feel off each other? Oh, man, it feels great. The camaraderie is great. Uh, Evolution Athletics, we all push each other to the mass. There's that little friendly competition in the room. Uh, who's going to run faster? Who's going to who's gonna show a bigger gas tank today and uh, pushes everybody to be the best? The whole, all, all those young guys at the gym, man, they push us to be the absolute best, especially Tyler. Tyler has been on the same boat as I am, training day in and day out. And it feels awesome having people on the same mission as you on the team. Yeah, man, when you just mentioned, you know, like just kind of preview, and I want to get into the Pete fight because we're going to have him later on. So maybe I might, we might kind of needle you to give us some ammunition when he comes on. But I will say, like, when Nate and I finally made this fight, we were both kind of like, oh, my God, this is fucking insane. Like, we were both kind of like fanboy. And Nate, and he's your coach, but we were fanboying together. And then Saturday night after your fight, him and I were texting. And he's like, did you see that shit? And I'm like, I saw that shit. And he's like, oh, this is going to be fucking fun. I'm like, there it is. And uh, I think that these are the type of matchups New England needs to see, you know, where guys are testing themselves. And, you know, this this has that adage of, like, you know, two high-level guys in the local scene right now usually they try to avoid each other. Here you are taking each other on. I also think a layer of that is, like, you know, you're the hung, young, hungry lion trying to come up. And kind of get into that UFC uh, path. He's been there. He's trying to get back there. So, like, I think that's another dynamic to this fight. Well, absolutely, man. Listen, I, I dropped out of college. I dropped out of college to do MMA. I only have a few years to do this shit. I can get my degree whenever. So, uh, I'm not getting any younger. If I can't keep up with the Peter Barrett's, then uh, what makes me think I can keep up with the top dogs of, of the UFC, where, where I want to be? Um, so I think it's uh, now or never. It's time to test myself and see where that takes me. Yeah, I love the hunger. What were we just talking about not too long ago about this being um, passing of the torch moment where someone who was in the UFC before you even made, made your pro debut and now within two years of you making that pro debut, you're challenging this kid. Like, Talk about a passing of the torch moment. How valuable is that torch? There's not a title shot on the line, but a big old torch. It feels like it. feels like a title shot, man. Yeah. Sure. I actually, you know, we, we there's a lot, Nate and I. We'll keep some stuff behind the behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny wants to see a cat. I know Johnny's a big oh, animal God. lover. And, is, and he well, needs I don't to know where she went, but she'll, she'll come back. She'll come back. There's plenty of them. There's three running around, so you'll, you'll see it. You got three cats? Oh, uh, well, my girlfriend has them, yeah. Well, my girlfriend has two, and my mother has one. I'm, uh, I'm staying with my parents currently because kind of my mother's not doing so well. My father's injured, and they need the hand around the house. 
And uh, yeah, they're helping me out too, big time. What's the, what's the cat's names? Uh, I have a Toby, we have Numi, and uh, we have uh, Chepe. <laughs> awesome. So let me ask you this. You know, obviously, I, I feel like you found. You guys hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you. I feel like we found you found your car. It was cutting up. It's kind of frozen here. Oh, can you hear us, though? I can hear you guys, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if your screen oh, freezes, back. that's okay. But like, I feel like you found your calling as as a as a fighter. It seems like that's something that you had deep in you. Uh, when I see your, you know, your demeanor and the way you fight inside the cage. But like, bring us back before fighting. What what was what was up for Mo before that? Where you did you play soccer, or hockey, football? Were you an athletic kid? Did you play sports? What, what do you got? Well, yeah, I grew up with a bunch of cousins that are around my age, a couple of years older, a couple of years younger. And, uh, man, they were all freak athletes, freak soccer players, and uh, I had to find my own sport. So uh, early on, I think I was 13 when I uh, decided to do boxing. A few kids from the neighborhood, were uh, they went and did boxing every night, and I found it very intriguing. I kind of joined in, and uh, that's when I started boxing back home. That's in Baghdad. Then here in high school um, – few years later, I came to the United States when I was 16, 2012. Um, I was a sophomore in high school, and uh, I played soccer in high school, and I went to Portland Boxing Club to train once or twice a week as much as I can. And so I was a boxing guy through and through. And then I met Nate Libby, and that's uh, that made the switch. Okay, nice. I, but, well... I I I, sh I trained with Nate, and Nate introduced me to jiu-jitsu, really, and we did cage work for a few days, and uh, it was uh, humbling. It was a humbling experience. I thought I was that tough, athletic guy, and I couldn't do shit to jiu-jitsu or grappling, and uh, I remember leaving that place thinking, I want to learn that. I want to be able to do that to somebody, and uh, I never looked back ever since. What year was that? You said you moved here in 2012. Uh, I met him when I was 21 years old, second year, first year, second year of college. Um, yeah, that was 2018, 2017. So five years, five, six years, no, Nate. Um, what, are you going, what were you going to college for? Business, business management. And then my last question on the Nate story is how did you meet him? Was it through the gym or is it just like a chance? Yeah. Him? Yeah. I, uh, so Portland boxing club is really hard to get into and to get some rounds in, especially sparring. They're very uh, particular about who they bring up to the ring and all that. They take care of their own. Um, so uh, I think Nate owned team Irish who, uh, who was recon at the time. And the town I lived in, in Westbrook, and uh, I checked it out online, and they had a sparring, a controlled sparring class on Wednesdays. So uh, prior to that, I went there for a week just to kind of shake the rust out and hit the bags. I joined in some of these classes, and uh, kind of Nate took me aside a few times, and he was like, you boxed in the past, asked me all these questions, and then he asked me to show up to team training on a Saturday. So uh, I did that, but I didn't do much in team training. I just kind of grappled with Nate for a couple rounds, and I was gassed the fuck out and hurt. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just kind of washed, and I fell in love with the sport, man. Yeah, it usually happens on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with definitely. We've all, we've all experienced that. Obviously, Johnny's fought 40 times, and Nanny's fought. I was – I fought before I started cage tying, so we all know what that's like. Uh, you know, the first day of grappling is never fun. Never forget it. Either. <laughs> uh, and much like you, like I remember, my, I, I think I told the story last week. My my first day walking into a gym, I'm like, yeah, I'm a tough guy. I kick his ass. And I got my ass handed to me, and I was like, oh shit, there's something to this. And I had that kind it's of humble. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, shit, maybe I need to do some more of this. Johnny, you got any questions about the matchup in particular? Not at all, um, I heard you guys are gonna be have plenty of fights. A uh, couple, a couple cars that day. Yeah. Was that? What's the dynamics with that? Have you guys figured that out yet? 
Yeah, so we're having a day. Obviously, we had, we had a day night doubleheader. You were a part of it back at Cage Titans. Yeah, I was. I was. Doubleheader. Um, honestly, sometimes I don't have enough going on with five kids, a restaurant, and Cage Titans, and all the other shit. I just said, screw it. We're going to do two cards. But uh, you know what it is? Is like love it, man. Love it. Yeah. You know, he's like, I got five guys. We want to get everybody on the card. And I don't want to say no to anybody. So I'm like, all right, Nate, let me see what I can do. And then I got Triforce, which is three or four names. And I got all these gyms that want to compete for Cage Titans. And, you know, for me, when I started Cage Titans, like, I wanted to have a promotion that fighters, I felt when I was fighting, people fought for promotions that were shit bags because they had no other options. So they had to fight for those shitty promotions that were around. So when now, like, Part of my thing is, is if somebody gives me their name, I want to, I, I'm doing everything I have my power to match them. So we had so many names. I was just like, all right, I can't do just one card anymore. So we have 12 pro fights at night and we have 18 fights, uh, pro and amateur during the day. Um, it's, 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 uh, that's awesome, man. Of the idea of it. Definitely. The last time I was there, you guys had a great success when you guys hosted two cards in one day. And, uh, can't wait for it. Love it. That's why we appreciate you, Mike. I appreciate you, man. I mean, honestly, you guys can fight for anybody. And, and it really humbles me that when people choose to fight for us, like, that's why I go, I'm like, do they want to fight for us? I'm going to do what I can do. But anyways, we're going to have a great night. If you're getting at, I know that Nate is pushing me to put you on the day card with the amateur fighters. <laughs> Don't tell them. I'm, I'm going to try to work on him because I, I really want to see you guys on, on the night card. I'm going to try to see what I can do with him uh, to convince him otherwise. Um, you know, but there was talks of either you and Pete being the main event for the daytime card. Um, you know, because we were going to do, we have a couple pro fights on the day card um, along with the amateur fights. So maybe you guys headline that. Um, that was what his wish was. My wish is to kind of have you as like, on the main, uh, on, on the nighttime all pro card because we've never done an all pro card um, in in our thirteen year history. Yeah. So I, 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 the first time we do an all pro card, all twelve pro, pro fights, I want to come big and I, I would love to see you on that night card. But if Nate pushes me, I might move you to. Hey, that's what you're asking. Figure that out, man. Either way, I'll show up to bang. I know. All right. So before we let you go, did you have a question? Prediction. A prediction. Right. Predictions. All right, let's I, I'm just going to go out there and uh, – Hold on. Hold on. Let's bring him up full screen because I want everybody to see <laughs> what his answers are. Uh, so let's pull down the comments. Let's pull him full screen. And, Johnny, give him the question again so he can answer and everybody can see. Do you have a prediction for the fight with I don't. It's it's really tough to predict a fight like that. I'm fighting a game opponent for the first time in a while. I'm just going to go out there and do my thing, try to be as tactical, tac, tac, technical as possibly uh, as I possibly can, uh, be strong and uh, give him nothing, take everything. Simple as that. All right. Before, uh, I know you mentioned a little earlier, um, you know, in my last kind of questions, you don't have to give away game plans, but like what what stands out about Pete that you're – worried about if if anything i mean like what you know some of the things that you know you mentioned the violence and things like that you kind of mentioned that he's a wild striker but you know there's got to be something good in there that you might be a little worried about if anything maybe not no his iq simply so simple as that his iq the guy had been fighting for a long long time he's been in the cage with the best of the best it's just his iq and how he can manipulate the fight to win it uh it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a game of chess and uh, my last thing for you, uh, you know, it's been a little while since the fans of Cage Titans have seen you. Remind them right now what they should expect from a Mo Al Kanani fight on fight. Uh, man, you should expect nothing less but violence. Highly technical violence, huh? Is that how he says it? I don't know. I mean, definitely English is not my first language, so I might have chopped that off, but. Just know that I'm going to show up there and take everything and steal the show and make it mine. I know it's the Peter Parrott show. It has been for a long time. Every time I've been there, he sells out most of the arena. 
you, you guys going to be booing after the fight. You guys going to be booing after the fight. Because I'm going to smash your boy in front of all of you. <laughs> I love it, man. Just for the record, everybody's our boy. But the fans, yes, I got you. We love you, Mo. Uh, I'm stoked to have you, you fight. Our yeah, you're our boy, too, man. Uh -huh. It's it's Everybody's our well, I appreciate you, guys. We hope fight is that, Andy? fight is prime time. It is as prime time as it gets. And... It's like, as prime I'm, time as it gets, but his poor coach doesn't want to be in me. I mean, in mass all day and all night. He wants to get home to his wife and kids. But hey, if you can do me a favor, wink, wink, give Nate a nudge and be like, "Hey, Nate, coach like, has got a coach. We got a hotel. We don't got to worry about it." Like, <laughs> no, like, that I'll see what I can do. No promises, but I'll see what I can do. Like Zach Cyril. He finally said something that was smart. He goes, Mo's not a daytime fighter. He's a primetime fighter. Uh, so there you go. Thank you so much for two, uh, for coming on with us. Uh, there you go. March 18th. We cannot wait to see you. Oh. Sponsors or sponsors, teammates, shout out kind of thing. Yeah, anybody? Yeah, man. Shout out to my coaches. Uh, I don't have any sponsors. Uh, shout out to my coaches that have been there with me. Through thick and thin, my family and friends who show up to every fight, no fa no matter how far it is, it's all for them. It's all for them. Nate already texted me. He goes, not fucking happening. <laughs> and Keegan goes, his wife is fine with it. She wants him gone. So <laughs> <laughs> Prime time, Mo Alkanani. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Oh, man. I love it. Wow. I love it. Wow. I love that they're watching, though. Shout out to Nate Libby. <laughs> Get in Keegan Hornstra. Keegan Hornstra. I don't like you, but you're a good guy. What do you like, Keegan? No, it's just me. He always <laughs> loves his shit. He always shits on. Keegan fought on the very first game. You fought on the very first game.